good governance the what and how the word governance derives ultimately from the greek verb kubaneo meaning to steer it's occasional use in english to refer to the specific activity of ruling a country according to wikipedia governance is all the processes of interaction be they through laws norms power or language of an organized society over a social system be they family tribe formal or informal organization territory or across territories governance objective the main function or aim a governance system tend to achieve be it of a country society or an organization is summarized by the following decision making creation of laws or constitution enforcement creation of access occasional management of resources justice delivery security achieving good governance good governance is a guarantee of the expectation of the governed it employs fairness and upholding common values above individual interests joseph robinet biden junior the 46th and current president of the united states once said that fighting corruption is not just good governance it's self defense it's patriotism this means that everyone from those in the position of authority or in the government to those at the grassroots level in a nation should make it their personal responsibility to protect their nation or society from the shackles of parochialism self aggrandizement and personal gain at the expense of common national values and progress in order for a governance system to be viewed as good for its people the following should be attained empathy in dealing with different constituents of the governed there should be a healthy balance between equity and equality inclusiveness and fairness no national of a nation is more national than any other national of that nation both within and outside the reach of that nation putting it in local context no nigerian is more nigerian than any other nigerian both within and outside nigeria thus good governance should ensure that every constituent of the governed is respected and factored in fairly in decision making and planning provision of enabling environments high integrity quotients and transparency open to constructive criticism and feedback building strong institutions in conclusion let us ponder on these words of raghuram rajan former governor of the reserve bank of india strong government does not mean simply military power or an efficient intelligence apparatus instead it should be mean effective fair administration in other words good governance when you talk about good governance i think <laughs> my experience i've not had good governance since i was born <laughs> so it i mean i've not experienced one let me put it that way i've seen it in other countries you know but i've not experienced one and it's unfortunate right mm -hmm. um very much unfortunate every patriotic nigerian wants to see a better nigeria every patriotic nigeria wants to wants the fact that whoever i'm, I'm putting into um, voting for um in that election would give returns on or, or would deliver on all the things that he's promised he, him or her has promised right so it becomes it begs us begs the problem that you know we don't get to see um good governance in nigeria which is so unfortunate um we see we, we always refer to countries like singapore refer to countries like um was it even the united states and we always want to become like them but we realize that the foundation is that we have to ensure we have to be conscious of the fact that we are putting in the right people in power that mm. way we can then demand for good governance and also there's a thing of where we most times we tend not to even demand for good governance we assume that we will get it but it doesn't happen mm. sometimes you just have to demand for good governance and it's our rights as citizens of a country to demand for good governance I feel your concern. I feel your concern because we're in, in situation. I believe that good governance is a process. So I'm going to, I want to specifically throw two um, pointers to Victor and the Raymond's conversation. Victor, you're a, you're a life coach, and most times you deal with 
um, feedback, constructive criticism and feedback. How can you, what can you see in this situation where the government of Nigeria, from, as seen by various administrations before this current one, find it difficult to deal with um, feedback? In this case, feedback would come in terms of maybe social media banter or protest. There, are, there is always a recurring decimal with regard to we don't want to no feedback. The next thing is we send the law enforcement agent to clamp them down. So what can you say about the government? And then the next thing is that Raymond is going to talk more about um, creating an enabling environment, especially for the offshoot of tech technology, young people participating in tech. So Victor, I want to hear yeah, your thoughts on thank that. Thank you so much, Elijah. You know, um, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. <laughs> So when people taste power, I mean, I was speaking to a young chap and I said, listen, if you get in there, you know, how are you sure you're going to make a difference, really? Right? Yeah. We don't know. You know, when you squeeze something, I said that before, when you squeeze something, when something goes through pressure, okay. the real content comes out. Right. So you don't even know if you are corrupt until you taste power. All right? So we can just be tweeting, oh, we need to get the old guys out, you know, and everything. But when you get in there, I mean, look at the NSAS okay. and all of that. Like there was division, even with answers. You know, some people were for this group, some were for this group, who started the answer. I mean, it was just a war around who started the answers movement. Who cares about who started it? Right? So someone is trying to say, Oh, I am the pioneer, I'm the initiator of answers. This is just answers. So what if why you not become the, 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 the governor or the president? I mean, so I, I think why um, most um, of our leaders in power do not take feedback very you know, um, in good faith or seriously, might be from what I said earlier, which is, you know, when you taste power. And it goes back to personal values. Family is the smallest unit of a nation. You know, cell is the smallest unit of life. To fix, you know, the societal decadence, the moral decadence, the governance decadence, we need to go back to family. Because the guys that couldn't pass WAEC, the guys that jumped fence in class, the guys that are, you know, terrorizing people in the streets, young guys, that ones that will end up in power in the next few years. So if we don't do something about it, if we don't fix that values from the grassroots, then they're going to go run for power. And they say, I mean, I mean, bad things continue to happen when good people do nothing. For you. you know, so because of the way the, the, the polity is so um, structured, good people do not want to go risk their lives, right? So what happens is the guy that couldn't pass jump, the guy that couldn't pass work, the guy that was a dropout, would end up becoming the governor. And what happens, what kind of values has he built, you know, or has he or she built, you know, from that fundamental? So let's go back to the roots, to the fundamentals, the grassroots, and begin to inculcate proper value system. And I think that, that, that's how we can begin to create that chain of good governance. Can I say something? Uh, sure, 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 sure. Raymond, just hold on a bit for, before you respond. The lady wants to say something. <laughs> See, I mean, in addition to all Victor said, I'm thinking we need to build institutions. True. Because the truth is, um, mm. regardless mm. of whether you bring in, I mean, if you take this crop of politicians to a country that has solid institutions, they would not. They would survive. They would not survive. They would not be corrupt. Mm. They would not do anything because they know the consequences of their actions. Sure. And it's the same thing. I mean, we are human. But I just love you right now for saying that. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, I, I, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and I mean, a senior person, and she was saying that because it was a struggle around a particular person. And she said, she said something that actually struck me. She said, you know, the restroom. issue that we have with this the person, restroom. you can also do the same thing if we don't put structure. And then just help you understand the fact that we need to ensure that we set up structures, build institutions that can help us push what we want in terms of um, a corruption-free economy and in terms of holding people accountable to whatever it is that they promise um, the electorate. Yeah. So, so let me say something very quickly. I'm very excited to talk about this. Uh, for one, I am one person that never, ever, ever shout about corruption. I don't believe there is corruption. I don't believe that. I simply believe that there are no consequences for action. You know, all over, everywhere in the world, we have corruption. I mean, I've been privileged to travel to 14 countries. And all these countries, none of them is an angel. None of them have sent field governance. 
But the, the difference is that they have set up system to ensure that people are severely or adequately punished for every action, for every decision, right? I think the problem we have back home in Nigeria is that there are no consequences for action. And it's not just about, you know, the people in government. And, and I think we also need to, because these days when they talk about corruption, people think it's about the politician that was elected four, three, three, four years ago. No, corruption is about the driver who jumps the traffic lights. Corruption is about the individual who is asking for money before he can submit a file. Corruption is about the policeman on the road who saw somebody with a device, a gadget, a laptop, and is asking the person to give money or else is threatening to kill the person. Okay. Corruption. Uh, Raymond, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, it's important that we build strong institutions that can stand the test of time beyond individual sentiments. Because if we focus more on the individuals, we sabotage the system. So the institution is more important than the individual. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocates. The, advo the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To, to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time. The station. Let's keep advocating for a better society.